guys, it's so good to be together again today. I'm Beth. I'm Caden. And I'm Ava. Now, I have a question for you guys. What is the craziest game that you've ever played? I remember a game that I played at our church teens group. It was life-size hungry hippos. What's that? Well, funny you should ask that, Caden, because our friends over on the So and So show, they played that game this week. So we are going to join them now to watch them play Life Size Hungry Hippos and to learn about our next rule for life, sharing. Ladies and gentlemen, are you ready for another round of Life Size Hungry Hungry Hippos? Let's bring out our players! Woo! I want you! Here we go, here we go, here we go! Bing bong! Players, take your positions. I'm ready. You ready, chicken? All right. Here we go, panda. Show them what we're made of. Oh, yeah. That's good center of gravity. Get ready. Get set. Go! Ha! Gotcha. Ha! Yes! Yes! All of them. Mine. And not yours. I am better. The I am superior. You are not. Oh, Steven's looking that. like he's ahead. Oh, Lawson's really moving across the floor. They're neck and neck. And... All the way across the floor. The panda's really raking him across the coal. Steven's moving for the last big one. I got the big ball. Basketball, basketball, basketball. Yeah. You got the, where was that one? Steven wins! Woo! That's not bad, I didn't even see the big one. Uh, fine. Look at that. I'll spot you a point. You All can right. have that one. Man, I didn't want anyway. Win. Cause he won. That was a good one. Okay, win. What's next? What's up? Now it's time for Life Size Jumanji. Nope, I'm out. Everybody, I'm Lawson and I'm Steven. Welcome to the so-and-so show Oh, look at that a comic book falling from the sky. It's a literary miracle Yeah, more like a out-of-control comic book collection. What? No, 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 don't say that. They'll hear you. Who? The drawings? Okay, seriously Lawson, can you please explain what's going on here? What, a guy can't like comics? This is not liking comics. This is preventing us from being able to do literally anything on the show today. Not true! <laughs> Look, these comics are all the same. Yeah, Frog Defenders of Saturn, issue number 106. It says 109. It's a misprint, and that's what makes them more valuable. Wait a minute, are you, are, are you telling me that all of these are Frog Defenders of Saturn, issue 109? 106. Why? Because they're mine, Stephen, they're all mine! But if they're all yours, that means nobody else can have one. Precisely! How much did all this cost you? Oh, um, a lot. And you think this is a wise investment? Oh yeah, no, my investment coach is completely on board with my fiscal choices. <laughs> How do you know the word fiscal and also your investment coach? Yes. Why don't you welcome someone who knows stuff? Welcome to the show, Mr. Moneybag! Ah, hello there, Lawson. Greetings, Stephen. Hello, Mr. Mr. Money... Mr. Moneybags, that is correct. <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that. money. <laughs> you ever play Monopoly? Oh, I love having Monopolies. Oh. Okay, well, we know who you are, so why don't you tell us what you know? Oh, of course. It's all in the name, my boy. It's all in the name. <laughs> That's my friend. You're gonna, you're gonna have to be more specific. I know money! Bags and bags of money. <laughs> With money, anything you want is yours for the taking and for the keeping. Remember that, Lawson, my boy. Exactly, right, yes, and I've been applying what you taught me to my comic book collection. Ooh. All for me, and yes, it's true, I want all the comics show 
Oh well for you. Ah, bravo, bravo. <laughs> well, that doesn't seem very nice. <laughs> Larson, whenever a friend asks me for a favor, do you know what I tell them? Oh yeah, I know this one. You say, I tell them no. All right, I tell them no. You don't need friends or favors in this life. Remember that all you need is pennies, quarters, and dollar bills raining from the sky. Those are your real friends. But <laughs> you do have friends that are that are real people, though, right? Right. Oh, of course I do. Of course I do. If you consider Mr. Franklin and Mr. Hamilton. <laughs> oh, hello there, Mr. Hamilton. Oh, you're looking mighty green today. Well, thank you, Mr. Franklin. Oh, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> Is this my future? <laughs> Doesn't have to be his future, does it? No, if you love God, you'll love others. And if you love others, then you will share. And that reminds me of a story in the Bible. Let's listen to it now. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 12, verses 13 through 21. Everywhere Jesus went, large crowds followed him. Some really wanted to learn and change. Some were just curious. Others, like the religious leaders, listened to Jesus' words so they could trap him with tricky questions. But there were some people who just wanted Jesus to back them up, to tell them that their way was the right way. One of these was a man, we'll call him Ezra. Teacher, hey, teacher. Ezra's demand was loud enough that everyone stopped talking to look at him. Are you gonna let me through or what? Ezra shoved through the crowd, dragging another man behind him, his brother. Teacher, you've got to tell my brother here that he has to divide the family property with me. Ezra's brother looked like he wanted to sink straight into the ground. Jesus turned to Ezra. Friend, who made me judge or umpire between you? People listen to you. I thought you could, you know, just settle this. Tell my brother I'm right. Watch out. Be on your guard against wanting to have more and more things. Life is not made up of how much a person has. That is not what I asked. Jesus didn't argue with the man. Instead, he told a story, a parable. If he had told this story today, it might sound just a little something like this. There once was a rich man whose field grew a fantastic crop of grain. Perhaps it was corn. His manager brought him the good news. Sir, we're set to bring in a bumper harvest of cobs and kernels. Yes! Go me! Oh, well, your employees did an excellent job of preparing the fields. Go me! And there was a lot of sunshine. Go me! And just the right amount of rain. Go me! Uh, yes, go you. Harvest the crop at once! Oh, well, we're working on that. There's uh, just a, a little problem. Problem? Who messed up? Fire them at once! Oh, no, 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 it's a good problem. You, you don't have enough barn space to store all your grain. Huh. huh. I'm just too successful. Go me. Well, I was thinking you could share some of the grain. Share it? Well, yes. Some extra bushels for your employees, maybe give some of it away, popcorn for all the kids in town, hold a cornbread festival for everyone. But, uh, but it's all mine. Oh, yes. Yes, it is. I know. I'll tear down my barns and build bigger ones. Then I can store up all the extra grain for myself. Oh. See to it. I want those new barns up by the time the corn harvest is in. <sighs> yes, sir. The old barns were torn down and brand new bigger barns were built. Perfection. Is the corn harvest complete? Yes, sir. All finished. Excellent. Have the men store it all in these new barns immediately. But, but they're so tired. I said immediately. <sighs> yes, sir. At last, the rich man's entire corn crop was stored in his shiny new barns. 
He settled back in a comfy deck chair and surveyed his property as the sun set. Go me! Self, you've done pretty well for yourself. You got grain stored away for a lot of years to come. He popped a gourmet corn chip into his mouth. Self, take it easy. Eat, drink, and live it up. You foolish man. The rich man nearly choked on his chip. <coughs> Excuse me? The rich man looked around, but he could see no one. He was entirely alone. Oh, great. Is this supposed to be some God moment where I discover what I've been doing wrong? <laughs> That's exactly what it was. You foolish man. Tonight I will take your life away from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? Uh, could we come up with a different ending to this story? But there was no way out for the rich man. He had chosen to focus only on what he could keep for himself. Jesus wrapped up his parable by explaining, That is how it will be for whoever stores things away for themselves, but is not rich in the sight of God. We don't know how Ezra responded, but maybe, just maybe, he started worrying less about getting more of his family's stuff. Maybe he started to care a little more about sharing what he did have with his brother. Steven? Yes, Lawson? I think I might be hoarding comic books. <laughs> <laughs> might be? I don't want to die like the rich fool in Jesus' story. I don't want to end up friendless and alone. I'm your friend. Not now, Stephen. I have to do something. What should I do? What should I do? I don't... <gasps> the light bulb. Reveal the question. What do you have that you can share? Comic books. Yeah. I have so many. <gasps> You get a comic! You get a comic! You get a comic! You get a comic! Lawson? You get a comic. Thank you. What do you have that you could share? Could be stuff you have, or you could share your time, or your talents. It's our responsibility to share what we have, and it's one of our rules for life. Share what you have. Awesome question. Jenny has a craft to help us with it now. Hello superstars. We have just been learning about the importance of sharing with others and not storing things up for ourselves. For today's craft at home, we are going to make what I'm going to call a sharing bar. You will need a toilet roll. I painted mine a darker brown, but you don't have to. Some scissors, a pen, yellow paper or card, a rectangle of card and a piece of patterned paper the same size, some PVA glue or a hot glue gun. First you need to take your toilet roll, squash the ends down like this and cut a triangle at the top. Now on the front here we are going to make the door. Take your scissors and make a cut up like that and then one across. You might want to use your black marker pen to draw a little door handle. Now take some ye yellow paper and you want to draw a window. Cut this out and stick it on the front of your barn. You can just use Pritt stick or PVA glue for this. Now we need to make the roof. Take your patterned paper and stick it onto your rectangle of card. Now fold your piece of card in half. Next, you need to stick your roof onto your bar. You can just use PVA glue for this, but you would need to let it set overnight. So to speed things up, I'm going to use a glue gun. Remember if you're using hot glue at home to get a grown up to help. You need to apply glue to these edges and stick your roof on like this. Now take your yellow paper and draw some rectangles. These are a little bit like hay bales that represent the farmer's crop. Now with the farmer, 
he was a bit foolish because he filled his barn up and when it was full, rather than sharing it with others, he just built himself a bigger barn and a bigger barn and it didn't go very well for him, did it? We need to not be like the foolish man. We need to think about the things that we have and think about how we can share them. Now on this piece of paper, you can write down some of the things that you can share. For example, your toys or a chocolate bar that's your favourite that you might want to share with a family member. When you've written this down, you can put what you've written down into your sharing barn as a reminder that we need to not store things up for ourselves, but we need to share with others. Let's share the things we have. Bye. See you next week. Thank you so much, Jenny. You know, we learn many awesome, amazing rules for life from God. Let's worship him together now. You never turn away, you never leave my side. And every time I call your name out just to find that you're already right here with me, never been alone. I can trust you with my heart, cause this I know. You are always faithful, you love me from the start. No matter what I'm facing, I will trust you with my heart. You are more than able to lead me through the dark. Your love is never failing, I will trust you with Trust you with my heart There are days when I feel I need a friend And then I hear your voice reminding me again That you're already right here with me Never been alone I can trust you with my heart Cause this I know You are always faithful You love me from the start Trust you with my heart You are more than able To lead me through the dark Your love is never fair Then I will trust you with my heart Oh, oh, oh I will trust you with my heart No matter what may come No matter what I go through God, you are Never gonna fail me I will trust you with my heart no matter what may come, no matter what I go through, God, you are Never gonna fail me, I will trust you with my heart You are always faithful, you love me from the start No matter what I'm facing, I will trust you with my heart You are more than able to lead me through the dark Your love is never failing, I will trust you with my heart you with my heart. Ava, you must be really tired after all that dancing. Can I share my water with you? Oh, thank you, Kaden. Wow, what a fun morning learning another one of our rules for life. We can love God and love others and we can share what we have too. Now we will see you next week for the next one in our rules for life. But remember superstars, you were born to shine. Bye!